Hello one and all, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to my very first video of 2023, which is going to be me telling you guys my top 10 most anticipated films of 2023. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming out this year, there's a lot of highly anticipated films coming out, there's a lot of films that were supposed to come out last year that are now finally making their way to the theater this year. Guys, I just say without further ado, let's not waste any time. The introduction is here, 2023 most anticipated Let's just get right into it, shall we? Kicking off the list at number 10 is Poor Things from director Yorgos Lanthimos. Now, this is a filmmaker that has a very interesting relationship with me. I don't like The Lobster at all. I know all film geeks love that film, but I can't stand it. However, I really liked Killing the Sacred Deer, and I absolutely loved The Favorite. And this film sounds really, really great. A woman kills herself, but then she gets her brain replaced by the brain of a child from her scientist father. Emma Stone, Willem Dafoe, Mark Ruffalo, Christopher Abbott, just to name a few, are in this film. And it sounds really great. And anything Yorgo Lanthimos touches, I'm there immediately. Plus Emma Stone working with this man again. She was so incredible in The Favorite. But just her collaborating with him is like a match made in heaven. And this is very much my jam, and I cannot wait to see it. Bradley Cooper is one of those performers that has shown his acting chops brilliantly throughout the years, but then he shocked the world by showing that he is also a pretty capable filmmaker behind the camera with A Star is Born, which was one of my favorite films of 2018. Now he's coming back and doing his second film, which is a film focusing on Leonard Bernstein. He's starring as him, he's directing it, he co-wrote the film, he's producing it. Carrie Mulligan's also in this, Jeremy Strawn, Matt Bomber. This could end up being the major Oscar player this year. And honestly, I would love to see Bradley Cooper get a nomination because the Academy really did him dirty by not nominating him for Star is Born for director. And I'm so eagerly excited to see what Bradley Cooper does next behind the camera. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Incredibly long title. But my hype for this is incredibly high. As someone who's really loved the Mission Impossible franchise, I'm so excited to see where they go next. And they find a way of topping themselves each and every film. I don't know how they do it, but I cannot wait to see what Tom Cruise and Christopher McQuarrie have in store for this particular film. So these are films that are able to give us really great stories. And the problem is with a lot of action movies nowadays, they're so focused on the style, they don't care about the substance. The Mission Impossible movies find a way of putting so much care into both that we get a very fun popcorn flick, but also a really great film, period. Mission Impossible Fallout is one of the best action films I have ever seen. So I don't know how they're gonna top that, but I have full faith that they're going to do it because, man, the hype for this is really freaking high. And I cannot wait to be back with Ethan Hunt and his team. Coming off the brilliant, jaw-droppingly brilliant Bones and All, we have another Luca Guadagnino film coming out this year called Challengers. Now, this is a sports comedy, supposedly. It stars Zendaya, Josh O'Connor, and Mike Feist. And it's about tennis players, and I don't give a shit about tennis, but Zendaya, Mike Feist, and Josh O'Connor are three gorgeous people. And Luca Guadagnino is one of the best filmmakers out there because he's one of those directors that is able to shit from one tone to another so seamlessly he blends together dramas unlike really any filmmaker working today and also i like that he doesn't stick with the same kind of film each and every time now he's doing a romantic sports comedy that's just so out of left field but leave it to look wanting you know, to pull it off and zendaya continues her track record as an incredibly talented person and mike feist i'm still not over the fact that a lot of people didn't give him the recognition that he deserves for west side story so i really hope people watch this and they're like yeah we really doubt in mike feist even though mike feist got so much acclaim for playing riff in west side story he didn't get as much buzz as Ariana DeBose did, who was great in the movie, by the way, but Mike Feist was the MVP of that movie, and he should have gotten more love. But yeah, who would have thought that I would be excited about a movie about tennis? Not this guy. <laughs> David Fincher's back. 
I mean, do I need to say any more with the killer? Michael Fassbender plays an assassin? Daddy Fassie? I mean, that's a, literally, that's a match made in heaven. Him working with Fincher, that's incredible. And look, I didn't hate Mank. I wasn't as wowed by it as I wanted to be, but I am very excited to see Fincher go back to something like this, where it's going to be so high octane and so thrilling and so engrossing. And again, the pairing of him and Michael Fassbender is a match made in heaven. Anytime David Fincher slaps his name on something, it's automatically going to find a way to get into my top 10 most anticipated of the year. Even if the story doesn't sound that interesting to me, like I didn't give a shit about Citizen Kane, but I was excited for the movie because it's David Fincher making it. This movie sounds very much up my alley. It has one of my favorite actors working today, and it's directed by one of my favorite filmmakers working. So yeah, of course The Killer was going to be in the top 10 list. I mean, did you really expect it not to be? Come on, guys. Before I sat down to record this list, I almost forgot that Hayao Miyazaki has a film coming out this year. And it's called How Do You Live? And I asked myself, how could I have lived with myself if I made this video and didn't put How Do You Live in the top five? Hayao Miyazaki is a filmmaker whose catalog I got into super late in my life. During the height of COVID, I binged all of his movies for the first time. And I'm like, wow. I mean, this guy is a true visionary. And it's understandable why he's not only regarded as maybe the greatest animation storyteller we have, but he's also one of the greatest storytellers that we've ever gotten. He spent years working on this movie. He is so meticulous with his craft. I love that he takes his time pumping out a film. We all thought that The Wind Rises was going to be the last film that he ever directed, and that felt like a very fitting swan song, but honestly, how do you live? I don't know what it's about. I don't care what it's about. I don't even care who's in it because, of course, I'm going to go see this film when it comes out. I'm not sure if it's coming to the United States in 2023, but I know it's confirmed to come out in the summer in Japan. So that gives me hope that it will be coming out at some point this year. Hayao Miyazaki tells these stories that are accessible for everybody of all ages, but he also finds a way of adding some nuance and grounded approach and raw emotion to them that you think to yourself, wow, we don't get animations like this here in the United States. Hayao Miyazaki is a visionary, and I do think that this could be the last time we ever see a movie from him, and I know it's going to deliver. He has yet to disappoint. I love literally every film that he's ever directed. Even the ones that I don't love as much as others are still great movies. Like, even his weakest film is still better than most of the animations that we've gotten in the last 15 to 20 years. That's saying a lot. When Dune came out in 2021, I wouldn't shut up about it. I cannot believe that we're now less than a year away from Dune Part 2. I can't believe that we're actually getting it. And the new additions to the cast, Florence Pugh, Leia Sadu, Austin Butler, and Christopher Walken. Are you kidding me? Like, look at that lineup. And then Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Josh Brolin, Dave Bautista, Stellan Skarsgård, Javier Bardem. This is an amazing cast. I love Denis Villeneuve so much. He's one of my favorites working today. And as someone who never read the book, as someone who had never seen any prior adaptations before the newest Dune, I have no idea where the story's going. And I'm so excited to see how this wraps up. Dune was a master class in sci-fi storytelling. It was the kind of sci-fi storytelling that I really admire where yes it has a heavy focus on the scope but you also care about the characters and you're so engrossed with the story that you're wondering where things are going to go and i have a feeling that the people who weren't as high on dune part one as they probably wanted to be that's going to change for them when they see the second half of this story come to life and i cannot wait it's going to be such a big spectacle i'm so friggin' excited for this in terms of the sequels coming out this year this is hands down my most anticipated sequel to come out in 2023. Of course, Killers of the Flower Moon was going to be in the top three. It's Martin Scorsese, Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, Jesse Plemons, Lily Gladstone, John Lithgow, and Brendan Fraser. What a cast. The story sounds insanely good. 
you have Eric Roth writing the screenplay, Scorsese directing. It's a Western of sorts. It's going to be so grand. Paramount and Apple are co-distributing it. I'm so bummed that we didn't get this last year because it was actually my second most anticipated film of 2022 when I made my video at the start of last year. Now it's number three, and I'm still very excited to see it whenever it comes out. I know that this is going to be a very special film because of the scope and it being Scorsese and the cast that he assembled. Martin Scorsese is one of the goats. He's one of the best filmmakers ever. And it sounds like a really compelling story. And it's a passion project that he's wanted to make for quite some time. And I cannot wait to see how it unfolds. It sounds great. It's probably going to be great. I cannot wait to see it. Now, I will rightfully admit that Christopher Nolan is not a top five filmmaker for me. I don't even consider him to be a top 10 filmmaker. However, I have yet to dislike any of his films. I like or love all of them. It took me a while to warm up to Tenet, but once I did, I'm like, yeah, I really do love Nolan. Killian Murphy finally headlining the movie, a major film, is a huge deal because Killian Murphy is a fantastic performer that really does not get the recognition he deserves when it comes to film obviously peaky blinders was such a big deal he was the lead of that show and that was a very beloved tv show but now he's given the opportunity to headline a film directed by christopher nolan who he's collaborated with many times and the ensemble cast here is incredibly stacked i mean do you guys even want me to read off the cast I have to pull it up on my phone. Just give me one second, please, because it is incredibly stacked. Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, Rami Malek, Benny Safdie, Michael Aragano, Josh Harnett, Kenneth Branagh, Dane DeHaan, David Krumholz, Alden Enreich, Matthew Modine, Jack Quaid, Jason Clark, Josh Peck, David Dashmalhan. I don't even think I pronounced that right. Devin Boswick, Alex Wolf, Tony Goldwyn, James Darcy, Scott Grimes. <laughs> Emma Dumont, Casey Affleck, Olivia Thurlby, and Gary Oldman. Incredibly stats cast, and the footage that we've gotten so far looks sublime. It looks gorgeous. The score is probably going to be banging. This could honestly end up being one of Christopher Nolan's best movies, not just on a filmmaking level, but on a story level. And I'm really excited to see how it pans out. I cannot wait to see it on a crisp 70 millimeter print. It's going to look absolutely stunning. This could also be a major, a major awards player in 2023. And what's crazy enough is that it comes out the same weekend as a particular film. And it's going to be one of the biggest weekends in film in the past 10 years. Because these are two incredibly highly anticipated films directed by two celebrated filmmakers, two acclaimed filmmakers, two Academy-level filmmakers. And it was really hard to pick which one would be my number one. But then I realized, how could I not put this particular film at number one? So as you could tell, my most anticipated film of 2023 is... Barbie, ladies and gentlemen, listen, many years ago, if you told me that the Barbie movie would be my most anticipated film of the year it came out, I would have probably sucker punched you in the face because I still, <clears throat> I still don't know exactly what they're doing with this. The curiosity is very, very high, but Greta Gerwig is a filmmaker who's directed two masterpieces, two of the best films of the past 10 years. Margot Robbie is Barbie. And Ryan Gosling is Ken. That's literally perfect casting. Noah Baba co-wrote the script with Greta Gerwig. This is destined for greatness. Now look, again, I have no idea what this film's going to be. That teaser that they dropped, slapped. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly who the target audience is. I'm sure there's going to be audiences that think that this is just going to be a straightforward, typical Barbie movie. And listen, it could be that. But I have a feeling it's going to be more than that. Leave it to Greta Gerwig to spike up the interest. Because if she was not involved in this, I probably would not give a slight shit about this movie. But because she's involved, Noah Baumbach and the two fantastic actors, 
the hype is through the roof. Look, this could be a film that may end up not being as great as it could be, but I'm eating my words just by saying that because I know this film is going to slap. That teaser slapped, those images slapped, the entire team behind this film slaps. This film is going to kick so much ass, and I'm so excited to see it, and I'm still blown away that it's coming out the same weekend as freaking Oppenheimer of all the movies, but that's great competition because these are two drastically different films. They're directed, like I said, by two celebrated filmmakers. There's obviously different audiences for each of these filmmakers, but as someone who loves both of them, I cannot wait to go to the movies the weekend of July 21st. 2023 so that is it with my most anticipated films of 2023 i'd be really curious to hear your guys's most anticipated films of the year down below in the comments let me know what you think of my list please tell me your most anticipated am i crazy for having barbie at number one i just need some honest opinions seriously guys from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for watching thank you for subscribing thank you for sticking with me and i cannot wait to deliver you guys more content in 2023 and i'll see you guys very very soon